the groups of soldiers are brought from individual lords. So they wear those individual lords' liveries. Each man at arms brings with him his own small retinue. That officially was feudalism. But proper feudalism hadn't really been in place for 200 years. Most people who own feudal dues nowadays simply pay rent to their lord and he recruits professional soldiers. So these are not amateur men at arms and various others who were the people who provided the experience of his army. But now the Tudor army comes on, the Stanleys have not committed themselves, and we can see the yellow Tudor banner at the back of the Tudor army. And they are advancing. They are screened by handgunners. But as they advance up the field, they are a perfect target for the Royal Artillery, which stands at the top of the hill. A lord, if they were to avoid horrendous casualties, the artillery itself is not particularly accurate, but when you saw that, it can be effective. And Henry Tudor had actually met artillery formations like this on the continent. And so now, after a very brief advance onto the battlefield, the first set of Tudor forces, the heaviest companies, are now advancing against the Yorkists. like a stalemate, even though the Royalists have the advantage of a greater number of soldiers. Contingents. There are also Flemings, whom we see in the uh, close to the commentary position. Uh, they're the gunners, not many of them. Yorkists do seem very much to be ignoring the minor irritation provided by the hand gunners. There aren't really enough of them to have any tactical effect, but at least Henry Tudor is using them 
to stop up the shooting of the artillery and hopefully divert it from being able to shoot at the main army itself. One of the leading commanders on the Yorkist side is the Duke of Norfolk, Lord Howard, retiring, and have been thinking that they are being pushed back. As if the king has actually ridden forth in the attempt to take Henry King. The Stanleys have indeed come in in the battle and they have come in on the on the Lancastrian side, on the side of Henry Tudor. And now crying treason. A huge flanking attack by some of the king's army. He's driving off the handgunners who've been so irritating. And they form the flank. Certainly now, it looks as if the Yorkist army has the advantage. They're pushing well back onto the field by King Richard III's army. This field is now a field, but far more now where in the Murray and the delivery of the king are now laying slain, lying slain. They have already offered their surrender. And it becomes clear now that the victorious side is not the Yorkist as would have been expected, but the Lancastrian by a very minor throw of the dice. And the king's, the old king's gilded helmet, effectively his crown, is taken from his head. Rumour says that it was found upon a thorn bush and it is presented to the man who has won this country by right of conquest. The new king. Take the judgment of the God of battle! Do I claim this field? Claim this clown? I claim this round! My round all round! Who have fought against me? Be a tainted traitor! Unless they here submit! Accept! Sir Robert Catesby! Sir William Lovell! And that job! The old feudalism is to be swept aside and abolished by the new king. So, ladies and gentlemen, on the 525th anniversary...